to my watercolor channel. I'm Laurel Hart and I'm glad you've chosen to spend this time with me. Um, I want to start out with a little analogy that um, I actually didn't come up with on my own. I heard another artist refer to this and I'm very sorry that I can't remember who it was. So I am going to share this and not take credit for it. Um, there's a famous children's story called Hansel and Gretel that probably most of you are familiar with. In one part of the story, the children are taken into the woods and abandoned. However, these were smart kids, and even though they didn't have any smartphones, they devised a means to get home. They secretly dropped white breadcrumbs along the way so they could retrace their steps back home. And today that's what I want this demonstration to be about. Um, I want to talk about the power of leaving white breadcrumbs in a painting uh, to give the viewer um, a pathway to get to the center of interest, the focal point or the home of the painting. So I'm going to begin. My subject is um, uh, a forest scene, appropriately for the analogy. And this is a biker in the woods. Um, it's actually my husband. Uh, I've been really turning to biking through the COVID uh, pandemic to have a little escape and a way to get out. And it has really been a fun thing and a really good way to uh, collect resource photos for future paintings. Anyway, this was a, a photograph that I took while we were on a ride um, in the canyons that are near my home. And it's quite a dark reference photo, so I hope you can see this okay. I'm going to have to lighten things somewhat, but um, I want to be able to make a pathway into this uh, picture here where my focal point is the, the bike rider and this beautiful swath of sunlight on the uh, pathway in the vegetation here. And the, what this will do is the, the um, stepping stones of light will draw the eye into the focal area and this little branchy thing will, will draw the eye back into the painting and you get this sort of a circular pattern of eye movement, which is a really nice um, way to compose a painting. I'm going to be using a color that I spoke about in my last video for um, the, to highlight these um, areas where the leaves are in the light. And it's called green gold. It's a very, very bright yellowish uh, gold color. And it's really nice for these um, areas where the sunlight is hitting the foliage. So I am going to begin, and I'm going to begin kind of in my traditional method. I'm going to start with the number 10 low Cornell round. Um, and it may seem a little bit odd for me to begin with the colors that are not really the foliage colors. But if I do that, it's going to give me a really, really nice underpainting where um, there will be more variety than just green in the, um, in the pigments and in the palette that I'll be using. So hopefully, um, this is going to work okay. I think I'll use, um, I think I'll use a, really a bright, um, cadmium yellow for my yellow in the triad. So I've got alizarin crimson as my red. And, um... Manganese blue as my blue. And I'm not going to be really super cautious about where I um, put these combinations of color. That is, I'm not going to necessarily put my yellows where these, where these highlights are. In this case, I'm probably going to jump over these spaces and leave it as white paper. So I'm going to start here. I'm starting on dry paper and just using combinations of these 
of these pigments on here. That was actually where I probably wanted to leave that nice that nice light on the leaves there. I need that to be a little bit stronger blue. Gonna paint right around the leaves of that little branchy stick thing and have some of them um, pointing over into the figure area and leaving some leaving some highlights over in here too. But I want to be careful not to cover totally. And I'm not sure. I guess I'll come in on the figure with the blue, the blue shirt right there, making sure to leave my whites. And along here, I want to uh, want to leave a nice, a nice little white. Pattern of leaves in the sun here too. My blue's getting kind of turned into purple there, but okay. And I want to leave some of that. Foliage in there. These blossoms that are happening in through here are not going to be a problem, even though they look like they are right now. Um, they won't be later. Okay. Now down in here, I am going to actually come in with just a, the purple that is going to be pretty. 
tea strong through there. And I'm trying to do it so I won't have to come back in and re... re-strengthen it. Just wanting to keep this um, wash flowing so it's not um, not going to get uh, too dry on the edges yet. And sometimes I like throwing in just a little bit of the yellow into that purple wash for a little bit of variety. A little bit of uh, white coming coming out of there where the um, where you've got kind of that tree trunk coming across there, and then over here I want this all to be. I'm going to get a blossom there for sure. But I want to kind of have these um, have this look like there's some shadows of branches coming across here. Okay, that is the first wash, folks, and um, you may be very scared at this point, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, it's like when my family watches a basketball game or a, a sporting event and our team is down. Um, they will say, um, we've got them right where we want them. And I think that can kind of apply to your painting when it's looking like a mess, but you are pretty sure you can pull it out in the end. I've got this right where I want it. So hopefully I'll be able to pull this together toward, more towards the end of the painting. For now, I'm going to grab my blow dryer and dry that first wash so that my paper goes back to being flat.
So as you can see here, my first wash is complete. Um, I could have, these colors actually could have been a little stronger, um, but I think they'll be okay in the long run because I'm going to be coming back over this with the second phase of the painting, which will be the middle values and at the very end, the very darkest darks, which um, bring more of the calligraphy jewelry pieces that set off the, the whole painting at the end. And you can see that I have omitted or moved around quite a bit of these white spots here because I want to, um, I want to have them more of a, a pathway that leads into my focal point here where the biker is in this, this uh, white sp spot of light there. So my next, um, my next part is going to be um, using some pigments that have the strength to go darker than a mid and light value. And I'll be using um, more um, tube green in the mix as well. Um, so I will begin with um, coming back in with some darker values now. Um, this is a sap green. I'm going to add um, some endanthrene blue with it. I like the endanthrene blue um, in, a, in the green mixture more than I do um, ultramarine blue. Okay, so I've I added in some um, a little bit of burnt sienna there or transparent oxide red, and then I'll also have this really pretty green gold that I told you about at the beginning. I've got those greens mixed up, but I think I'm going to jump over and work on my center of interest just a little bit to get um, to get uh, the values there that I want, and then um, and then move out from that uh, figure. into the foliage surrounding it. Teeny little bit of red in there in the bike seat. Maybe it's just the reflector. And I'm trying to just get a little skin tone here. Need that um, color to dry on his pant legs a little better. And then I want that skin tone on his arms. And I also want to Soften the edge of this shadow on his shirt a little bit too. I don't want that quite so harsh. And then he's kind of hunched over his bike, so his um, his helmet is kind 
it down like that. And a little bit of the bike tire is in the sun, so... That'll be there. And there's a nice little cast shadow from him off into the bushes here. And now I'll pick up some of my greens and Carry that over into here. And that's just kind of some little abstract patterns of the grass and whatnot. Whatnot. What a stupid word. Okay. And I can further make some lights here by just dabbing my um, paper towel onto the pigment and pulling it out just a little bit. Then I'm just going to move on up here. And um, start put in, putting in some of this darker pine tree that's up here behind him. It's got a little bit of the the trunk showing in places. And a little bit of that uh, green gold again to kind of set that off in places where where it's a little bit lighter. Now I've got myself in a um, bit of a quandary here. This, sh this is really dark and should be setting that tree forward, but I don't know. Mm. If I want to make that all dark or not. little tree worked out so pretty that I kind of don't want to 
go back into it, but I might need to. I'm really liking those greens. That that was um, sap green and um, indanthrine blue, a little bit of um, burnt sienna, which adds a little red to it and tones it back from being quite so bright. And then that's that green gold, and I'm I really love that color. Okay, so. Um, Let's work this area over here where we've got the um, we've got the tree trunk coming all the way down here, and I I think I'm going to just go ahead and put that in. Um, And it has all these branches coming down out of there, but it's got that really pretty um, light showing from behind. wetting this area back behind there because I kind of kind of want that to be soft back in there And there you can see I'm, I'm trying to create that illusion of that stuff in the um, sun. And um, I really do need a dark to punch out that um, to punch out the figure here. So I think I'm going to have to do it.
Okay, I think that is the right decision to make that really dark back there, but... Um... Now I need some stronger pigment while, while I'm on this wet. I think my um, tree trunk might want to be a little bit darker in comparison with the rest of the darks I'm putting in. And you can just kind of intersperse these um, darks in through here to, um, I don't know, look like the leaves and stuff. We need to stop saying and stuff. Okay, but now we've come down to another light area of the, of the painting, which I want to leave that in the light too. And you don't need to worry too much if these um, whites look kind of clunky. They're, they're um, they'll, they look more natural if they're just little abstract shapes. So And I'm not sure how these whites got clear over there. They should be back over here a little bit, but such as it is. Okay, then I've got a dark back here that is setting off another another light pattern of um, a, a bush or something there. And that's, um, and so that's what's keeping this painting moving forward is each time I have another level of um, distance coming forward, I can set it off by painting dark behind it and that pushes it forward. I've, I've talked about that somewhat before. And you notice that I'm, I'm using not just green all the time. I've got um, purple going and, um, and other darks, blue and um, 
uh, red, transparent oxide red. And it just, these um, secondary colors, the purple and um, green, are making a really nice um, triad in the painting, rather than just the straight red, red, yellow, and blue. So then I want more of that green that I, whoops, not, not the, uh, not the, not the um, ultramarine in this case, this um, that other blue is doing a better job, and I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> moment. Um, I said it earlier, but I can't remember now. Okay, th there's a really nice um, deep dark here. And coming up in here, this is some of the darkest area right in through there as well. And I'm going to use a little bit of that green gold to um, add a bit more green in here. So I'm just making layers of different values to make this painting appear as if it has dimension. And I feel like I need, I can kind of um, create some of the stuff. See how painting behind there made that all of a sudden look like it's leaves? I don't want to have too many hard edges, so I'm softening up some of this. Okay, then I'm going to come over and work on this. I need to balance this dark over here. And I still, 
I still want this shadow here to be darker. Yeah, that's more, more what I wanted. This down in here could use a little bit of also defining some leaves down in here. But corners generally should be a quieter part of the painting, so I don't want to do too much to draw the eye over there. Um, okay, so let's mix up that same indanthrene blue. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. And I want, I don't really want this white to go off the page. So I'm going to let this um, stem of this little branch, whatever it is, block, block that right there. And then I'm going to carry this green down in here. I am really liking that combination of that green gold in with the indanthrene blue. a little more purple just to draw that into the into the shadow there I kind of want to pop some burnt sienna in there. Feeling like it needs a little bit of, <laughs> of a red in there. And then I can tell already that I need to strengthen this back in here. Um, I was going to paint on my reference photo there. That's not going to work too well. Um, I'm going to take those leaves out there.
this tree needs a little more definition to it here. I feel like I'm really getting busy, but um, it seems like the paintings tell me to telling me to do it. So <laughs> I hope it's right. And now I do feel like um, this right over in here needs to be a little dark, a little darker. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to um, wipe out and bring back a little bit of that. Maybe I won't be able to. I might not lift very well right here. Anyway, I like this pine tree a little better when I had the softer edges, but I do think it needs that um, that darker value back here. Yeah, that, that helped to indicate that there's more layers of leaves and things going on back here. And so that is another really um, good, good way to set off your center of interest is the darkest dark and the lightest light next to each other like that. So that's why that required a really nice dark around the figure. Okay, this has got to have some little darks in here setting this off.
And I can tell I need to strengthen the shadows coming through here. They're not quite deep enough. It's really dark against the biker. I don't know if I've got these two equal up in here, but I think you can maybe see now at this stage why I really like to start out with those um, with that really clean color at the beginning because then you just get these little places that 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 color pokes through at the end and it just mm, makes it sing a little better. These um, areas coming in, I would like to soften back their edges a little bit. So they look more like shadow. Shadow splotches of light. And these very darkest darks um, are fun to put in at the end, and it, it just kind of gives it the final dimension that it needs. And I think um, it would be fun to take a rigger brush and put a few more details in the branches, which I think I'll do. I decided I didn't really think that detail was necessary there. And I'm trying to decide if this needs to be have a little more punch to it. It maybe does. So that it does look like there's some kind of bush or something over there.
Just put in a little bit more dark on that biker. Kind of made him look a little bit crooked there. Gonna do a little tiny sliver of um, of white gouache just to pick back up that light on his helmet there. And right there where I just so that's a little bit of cheating, but um. I think it needed that to set that helmet off again. Um, I'm about to wrap up here. Um, I think I did see that there needs to be I don't know, some little, just some little things to indicate that that is rocks or leaves or something where that where the sun is hitting there. Just needs a little bit more texture in there. And then um, I think this little thingy here is conflicting a little bit with my rider, so I'm going to bring that down. a little bit of um, more green. Coming right back through there. You know, I, I don't even know that I like that there. I think that's kind of looking a little bit confusing next to the rider. And then I want to um, just strengthen this a little bit to where it's coming out of the bushes here and here.
Okay, I said I was going to get my rigger and do a little bit of um, branch work on here, which I think I will. make these branches kind of have a little more purpose to where they're going. Some of this going the other side too. And then I I think I've got his helmet now a little bit out of proportion. So I'm going to just come back and make that a little bit more. Um, set that off a little bit more. Okay. All right, well, I think it's about time to call it quits on this. Um, I do still feel like this needs a little. There may be a few more things that I would um, do to this, and maybe I will still. But um, I think for the most part, this is completed. And I think um, I, think I um, was able to carry out the idea that um, I wanted these um, white shapes breadcrumbs, if we tie back to the other analogy, that lead the eye into the painting and up into the focal area, coming up around here with the leaves and back around, kind of in a circle right around that focal area. And I, I think it really did um, end up working okay. I am tempted to go back over some of this with water, just clear water to blur it back, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it as is for now and um, be done. So thank you for joining me. And uh, I hope this was a good lesson to help with um, a way to use the white spaces in your painting to create uh, a path of vision for the viewer. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.